to order on the Water Advisory Board for today, Wednesday, August 17th. Uh, public comment issue or items that are not on the agenda may be raised by the public at this time. Citizens should speak from the podium. Begin by stating their name and limit remarks to less than three minutes. Board members may request that a discussed item be placed on a future agenda. The Water Advisory Board takes public comment on all regular agenda items during the discussion of those items. Is there any public comment at this time? There not being any, we'll go ahead with the regular agenda. Item number one is approving the June 20th, 2016 minutes. Those. If not, I'll give you a chance to look over them just a minute. See if there are any questions. Got a motion by Judge Floyd. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are approved as presented. Okay, item number B, presentation and update regarding the street rehab program presented by Russell. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, and you? Good. Good. Uh, like Mr. Boyd said, my name is Russell Pale, and I'm the city engineer for the city of San Angelo. Hopefully I can get this thing to work. Oh, the clicker, yeah, I always forget. All right, so uh, the city of San Angelo or engineering department had a street uh, assessment done back in, or it was completed in January of 2016. It, it took us quite a while to go through every street throughout the city of San Angelo, but we worked with uh, an engineering firm named uh, Fugro uh, Inc. They're a pavement specialist and Based on their study, uh, they, well, with their study, they provided us uh, some budgetary numbers for the reconstruction of all the city streets, and along with that, the utilities and uh, you know water and sewer, and any drainage improvements that needed to be addressed as well. Um, you know, with that, they, they you know they gave us you know a list of streets that needed to have a mill and overlay construction, which is just kind of you know going through there removing the top two inches of asphalt and coming back with a new layer of asphalt um, they also gave us recommendations as far as which streets needed to be reconstructed and um, you know and then to you know as we're moving forward with that we'll you know the engineering for, you know we have a contract with different engineering firms to help us uh, expedite these projects they'll be um, giving us recommendations as far as you know, rehabilitating water and sewer infrastructure underneath those streets and then the drainage improvements as well. Um, the, funding for, the funding for this, uh, City Council gave us direction to sell approximately, or about $80 million worth of bonds over the next 10 years. It's a plan that this uh, City Council wants to address, um, or that's how we're going to be able to attack it. The City can afford this uh, currently with the general fund. and. Um, we're going to sell those bonds at a rate of $16 million every two years. So that'll basically give us, you know, $8 million per year for the next 10, 10 years. Uh, then the funding for the water utilities, you know, I guess that's what Bill will be covering here in a little bit, but basically we'll need to, you know, look at other options as far as capital or bonds or things of that nature. Um, our year one projects um coming up and what we have out on the street right now for advertisement is a uh, mlk boulevard um right now we have or it's it's about four and a half million dollars of bond funding or street reconstruction is what we're estimating or budgeting for um you know until we have actually have those numbers and we'll, we'll have a little better idea of what that'll look like but you know as far as the budgetary numbers we use for mlk was approximately 2.1 million dollars and then Bell Street, Bell Street is a, uh, you know, there's been a lot of heat on that specific project, but it's based on the size of that project, we went, we went ahead and broke it up into three phases. Uh, phase one will be from basically Rio Concho Drive to Harris Avenue. Phase two will be from 
Harris to to the loop, and then phase three, which is the yellow section that I have here, will be um, uh, north of the loop from up to Old Ballinger Highway. Phase phase three, you know, the way we have this spaced out won't actually happen until or won't actually be let until our year three fundings. Um, there again, each of those projects, you know, as far as water utilities goes, you know, it's going to be a little over, we're budgeting approximately a million dollars per phase for Bell Street. Can I interject something here? Yes, Russell? sir. What we've done is, and you'll get a copy of it, I've asked, there's a there's priority of 25 items, which is the street construction. Let me kind of preface <coughs> that a little bit, right? And it goes all the way down to what streets need to be done. When he's talking about doing MLK and Bell, the infrastructure is being done along with that that talks about water utilities so there's no worry right. about do a street and then we have a dig up if you will right. and then we've got a project going on where we're looking at our infrastructure the water and the sewage lines that'll be ready and bill will talk about that in a couple of months and we'll take those two and merge those together and that may change some of this prioritization that you'll see but it's planning like what you've done to make it all correct and where it all fits is that is that's that correct right? this is a a living plan you know it's you know we can we can change it up however you know it's you know it's just basically we're you know the streets have been the driving factor for, for the for the most part right now um you know and i'm i'm sorry you know i, I guess i could get a little more background i apologize um, that's okay you know like like you said you know we are you know we want to replace utilities so that we're not undermining our streets. You know, it's just, that's the, the main emphasis here. So we want to, you know, make sure that we're, you know, putting good money on good money um, type of deal. So that's that's our logic moving forward. You know, and two, you know, the, the way that the funding, the funding that we can uh, afford, you know, we basically want to do, we're going to have some bigger projects in each of these two year uh, phases and then, We'll, you know, we'll try and fit in some smaller projects. And when I say smaller projects, they're typically are going to be our mill and overlay projects. You know, they're typically not nearly as involved. Um, on some of the projects, you know, I was going to get that to here, like on College Hills, you know, we, we won't necessarily have to, you know, based on the age of the infrastructure, we looked at the, the amount of main breaks going in this South College Hills uh, Boulevard. It's basically this mill and overlay project is from uh, Loop 306 to Valley View, so basically the southern portion of College Hills Boulevard. You know, we looked at the age of the water utility and sewer lines in that area. You know, and we haven't had that many breaks, so we're we're just going to do a mill and overlay project. We're not going to really need to address any utilities in that project. So, like this, this funding here would actually go away for that specific project. Um, so. So we'll be able to save a little bit of money there. We're, and we're going to look at this, you know, as logically as we can as far as. Russell, on the, on the first year of the Bell Street, what, what did you say that section was? I'm sorry. Sure. No, you're fine. The first section of uh, Bell Street that we're looking at is from Rio Concho Drive, which is basically okay. at gotcha. the river. I was about to say, because it seemed like we did everything south of the river. That's correct. That's we already did, been done. That, that's already been done. Right. So we'll. Okay. We're looking at everything north of the river. Gotcha. Thanks. All right. So, you know, moving forward, you know, we've we've got a we've also, you know, broken up Chadburn. You know, Chadburn's a really long street. You know, goes. We're looking at, you know, doing a rehab on that project from, basically, from Forty Third Street all the way down to, uh, Avenue L, I believe. Um, and basically, we're just looking at a mill and overlay on that project, but we will be rehabbing the water and sewer infrastructure that crosses or parallels the street there. You know, the idea or the philosophy is to try and moving forward in any, in any new subdivisions, for that matter, we're wanting to move all of our, at least the water, out from underneath the street. We don't want it to be underneath the street so that when we do have a main break, and we are going to have more main breaks, it's just a sad fact of how it goes, but... You know, we want to move them out from underneath the street so that when they do break, we're not having to cut up our street, you know, or try and minimize uh, that failure there. Um, so here are the estimated totals. You know, this is a, these totals are, you know, right-of-way to right-of-way uh, rehab. And, that, and these numbers include our, 
you know, if we need to do any outside engineering or um, any, any additional studies, you know, that, that type of thing, you know, th the budgeting that we had uh, Fugro provide us was a right-of-way to right-of-way replacement. You know, some of it includes, uh, you know, sidewalks, you know, in some key areas, as well as utilities. So these, these numbers are fairly conservative, but um, basically for the next uh, 10 years, we're looking at approximately 25 million for water utilities rehab and approximately $31 million for sewer rehab. That's my quick and dirty version yeah, of, dirty version. of Does my everybody understand what we're trying to yeah. do? Yeah, I was just going to reiterate, make sure I'm on. Uh, the study that y'all have done has been centered on streets, and we're doing the same type of study. That's so correct. Better understand the water infrastructure. That's correct. Yes, we're. That then you take the two, and that's why there could be some flex or some changes. That's correct. The, from the, the grid that you laid out here. Because right. Because the Depending water too needs on may show higher priorities in some places. That's correct. That's that correct. Y'all haven't captured. Okay. Right. That's what so, thinking. yeah, we're doing a water, what's called a water master plan, and they're going to be looking at the different, you know, the, the ages and pressures of, you know, of our within our water system, you know, the age of the age of water, the age of the pipe, the, um, you know, the pressures, the different pressure planes, you know, our different elevated storage pumps, you know, they're going to be looking at our entire water system. And then we'll, you know, come back and, and reevaluate this. And then two, this, this is a plan. I mean, this is the plan that, you know, as far as what city councils address, you know, this $80 million for the next 10 years, as far as street reconstruction goes, you know, that could, that could vary a little bit depending on how council sees fit. You know, they may want to increase their efforts towards that. They may want to decrease their efforts toward that. So it is a plan at this point. And then, you know, we, you know, we're just going with this study that we have, and we're trying to yeah. eat, the, eat the elephant. Well, it's got to be flexible. I mean, but at least we've got a prioritization from the street side of one through twenty-five, which I think it's important that the public understands <laughs> initially. But once we get the study on the infrastructure and you merge the two together, some of those priorities may change. And so however we print that, they need to understand that's the initial planning phase, but it's, it could change depending on what we see from an infrastructure need right. uh, and address those major breaks as they happen. So, I, I mean, I like what we're doing. And then we'll talk about a funding source from our side uh, for infrastructure when Water. Bill gets up and makes his presentation. So the streets are eighty-two million. Is that right? And then, yeah, uh, more more or less. I mean, yeah, you know, eighty-ish, eighty-ish. Right. You know, I mean, it's that's, those are some good budgetary numbers that we have sure. so far, and I mean, we're but the infrastructure under it, the water sewer is fifty-six. That's estimated. Yes, that is the estimated cost. But like I said, like on College Hills, you know, we're you know we we went ahead and budget you know came up with a budgetary number to replace all that infrastructure underneath. Uh, College Hills, but, you know, based on the age and we've looked at the breaks and, you know, basically the life cycle of the street, you know, giving, doing a mill and overlay will give us another, you know, and then seal coating it and going, maintaining it over the next few years will give us a basically another 10 to 15 years before we have to, before we would really need to do a full reconstruct. And at that point is, you know, about the triggering point as far as the life cycle of the water and sewer that's underneath that street. You got to you got to understand five, six, seven, nine years down the road, the cost of material, cost of our labor, and so forth. It, yes. I mean, it's going to be a, it's it's a moving number, but you've got to start somewhere to give the public an idea of what we're talking about spending over the next ten years, anyway. Correct. Yes, sir. Questions? Any other questions? Good report. Appreciate you very much. Thanks, Russell. Sir, thank you. Any comments from the crowd, from the public? Okay. If not, we'll move on to item number C. Discussion and possible action on infrastructure rehab, prioritization, and financing. Bill? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
and just to, to follow uh, right along with this, this very discussion, we want to talk about how we will um, finance um, the infrastructure, water and sewer infrastructure re replacement to be part of the, or to move along with the street program and other needs that, that we have as well outside of that. Um, it has been estimated over a period of time that uh, based on the age of the infrastructure and, and uh, uh, condition that there's probably somewhere around $200 million worth of uh, infrastructure rehabilitation needs uh, in, in the city. Um, it, it's probably not realistic to think that uh, we're going to go out and do that, but we certainly need to have a plan uh, of how we're going to attack this over, over a period of time. And the street program provides us a, a good opportunity to do that. Uh, what we need to figure out, though, is how we're going to uh, fund that. And as Russell just pointed out, there's about $56 million uh, of infrastructure, water and sewer infrastructure rehab needs that's part of the street program. So that's just, just keeping up with the street program. At the same time, like I just mentioned, we have other needs as well that we've got to think about as we move forward with that. So what well, we, we budget... Um, historically have budgeted about $3 million a year in the water fund and $1.2 million a year in the, in the uh, wastewater fund for cash capital expenditures. Um, the problem is, is that uh, that's not enough money uh, to, to pay as you go, if you will, to, to keep up with the, the needs that we have. And so what we're looking at doing is, is how do we use this um, money to, to leverage that uh, to be able to borrow the money and, and uh, retire the debt on that uh, using this and not having, and that's part of our rate, uh, five-year rate plan. So we ask our financial advisors to take a look at that and see if we use this money as debt service, how much money could we actually borrow? Um, and this just shows right here that line right there is what uh, we've historically done in the uh, water fund and what's in the five-year rate plan, and it's just a little bit less than $3 million. So, and when the wastewater, it's this number right here. So that, is, that actually, uh, for cash funding capital, was built into the five-year rate plan. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So we asked the financial advisors, if we, if we use that money as debt service, how much money could we actually borrow? Uh, and... and over a seven-year period, borrowing it in chunks just like this we would in the street program, we can borrow a little over $80 million and not have to uh, add any additional debt service outside of what we're already funding. Now, one thing I do want to want to point out, uh, back to this, is, again, historically we have funded that, but until we did the five-year rate plan and did the rate increase, that money was not available. Uh, our fund balance had uh, been reduced to a point where we did not have that money, of, uh, the money was not going to be available. So it's very important that we stick with this plan to be able to have that uh, additional funding for, um, to be able to pay for this rehabilitation. So what we're actually talking about now is to, um, to be able to keep up with this program is to be able to go out and borrow money um, in larger chunks to be able to do bigger pieces of our infrastructure rehab. One of the things that, that was talked about was the master plan and the condition slash risk assessment. And they're kind of two separate things, although it's, it's, it's all part of one project. Uh, well, what we've asked the consultants to do is, is do an assessment of our infrastructure, the water and, and sewer infrastructure, and based on a risk assessment. So we would understand the, not only the condition, uh, but what's the risk of failure. Uh, and that helps us to prioritize the areas that we need to, to approach first and that we need to spend uh, money on. And so that's where we're gonna get into looking in the future as uh, changing, as we overlay that over the street program it might change the priority of the street program because we might have some areas that uh, are of such a priority that we need to do those now and they don't need to, to, to wait. Um, we've also got needs that's outside of the street program. There's some areas of the city that are not being included in the street program that we know we have 
uh, major issues. And so at the same time, uh, while, we're while we're doing projects in the street, we're gonna need to address those as well. So uh, that's why I think it's important that we can uh, look at the, whether we spend $80 million over the next 10 years or not uh, is one thing, but we need to be able to address all of those issues. And once we have the assessment from the, uh, our uh, consultants, we'll be able to I said, overlay that and know exactly what that time frame would be and how much money we'd have to spend. So what I'm looking from, from y'all today is a, an agreement, if you will, that we, it, that we use this type of process, uh, funding process, to be able to meet the infrastructure rehab needs that we have, uh, which means we would use that, that we budgeted the cash capital as debt service to be able to have more money. And Mike, the, you had mentioned that that uh, was going to be done in a couple months. It's actually probably, we're talking to consultants, probably after the first of the year uh, before they had that assessment. But that doesn't slow us down at all because the first two projects, as Russell mentioned, are MLK and Bell Street, and we do have the funding to keep up to do those. That's the 300000 or so that, I mean, the checking the infrastructure, the water line stuff that we talked about at the last meeting, right? Correct. And that's, under, that's underway. All the, right. right. And the good news, it doesn't change our original plan. We went in and looked at what they were, and we lowered that percentage increase. We will still look at reviewing that on an annual basis. I want to make that clear. What it shows, though, is if we adopt the plan, what we put in place, that 11.75 going down to whatever, seven and a quarter percent increase, will service the debt depend on how we need that money. And, and I use the term chunks, which is probably not a good, but and then that funding source and how we do it. Uh, we won't know that yet until we get that second part of our plan and merge the two together and present that to council and say, hey, <clears throat> here's what it is, here's what we're recommending that we follow uh, to give us a 10 year. And everybody would know in what part of town they live in when their streets are gonna be repaired, redone. And personally, I like that. Then you can plan for it. Questions? Yeah. <clears throat> one quick one. <clears throat> Obviously, the road construction's been a huge driving issue within the citizens of the city for that road reconstruction. It obviously is very prudent for us to take care of the utilities that are underneath them as we go. What other alternative is there for us to be able to fund those utility upgrades to keep up with the road program? Is there, there's no there's other one. options that right. seem to be evident of how we fund that to keep up with that? There's, there's two options is to cash fund it or borrow the money to do it. And, and we don't have the cash to do it. So, but we can use the amount of money that we've plugged into this, as Mike was pointing out, to retire that debt. And so this plan still still stands. As I say, it just is, as far as us doing it out of the capital funds that are generated, we can't keep up with their pace. And it all ties in, I mean, look at the bottom line where it says days cash on hand. It talks about building it to the 75 days, which is what we really need, and you go back to your bond rating and what you're able to do when we get those bonds placed. So it all, right now it all ties in to meet the requirements that we need. So if for some reason our day's cash on hand goes up, we could look, you know, it could be adjusted downward. We just, at this point we don't know, but it's no, a plan. We don't, but the, I think the bottom line is this fits in exactly as we as went through our analysis yeah. for that rate plan. And it, so let's, make use of it yeah there's another piece of this that that uh, I'll, we'll talk about on the next item but while we're on this screen I want to point out to you that this 80 million dollars right here was what was plugged in for our future water supply and it was put in in one year and what we're going to talk about in a little bit will probably show uh, what will that, that that's not going to happen we're going to end up seeing that probably extend it out over a period of time, which will also affect the future rate increases that we, that we might have. And that's why we have this model, and this came right out of the, the rate model that was built. Uh, each year we can plug in, we can make these changes and see what that does to our, our 
days of cash on hand, and we can adjust these, and hopefully they'll adjust lower downward. Yeah, we'll uh, lower them. Right. Which holds true to what we wanted to do initially Absolutely. and what we agreed to do from a public perspective. So right. the further we push that $80 million to the right, the, the consumer will benefit from yeah. it. So is there a motion to make this recommendation that we look for this spending this money for infrastructure based off the plan that's presented knowing that we will adjust it uh, as we get those reports i would so move Chuck, is there a second second then discussion all in favor say aye um, i can think we got some public comment okay uh, my name is Darren Fentress. Uh, I work for Blyland Associates here in town, and I'm also a resident of San Angelo. Uh, I work with uh, small to medium-sized municipalities, my districts, uh, help them with their budgeting, their infrastructure, um, and their uh, financial needs. I am not a financial advisor. I'm a civil engineer, um, but I've been in situations like this quite a bit. Uh, the only thing I would like to point out is that I've not seen anyone talk about using debt service tax instead of water rates. Um, everybody pays taxes to the federal government every year, uh, and your debt service tax is a deduction on your federal income tax return, where when you fund projects strictly with water and sewer rates, there's no added benefit in the long run uh, or when you file your federal taxes. Um, raising taxes is a PR nightmare, I understand that. Um, but I, I would like to see, you know, what the city could do as far as their debt service tax um, and, and funding some of these projects for that because as a resident, I get the added benefit of taking that off my federal taxes. Thank you. I don't really have anything to add to that except he's right. And that's, that's a struggle that just about every city has gone through when you're talking about uh, – Using rates, uh, rate funding, uh, debt, or tax funding is is that balance, and and the political issues surrounding that are very difficult. So, um, I mean, it's certainly right. You get to deduct your your taxes, but not your rates. So, right. okay, thanks, Dan. Looking to other comment. Good point. We appreciate it. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Item number D. There's a couple of, of issues uh, associated with this next item. Um, we'll kind of separate them out. One is, is just kind of a um, follow up on on the uh, hickory discussion uh, y'all had made a, a, um, a decision to uh, move forward with the uh, the build out of the hickory or expanding the hickory so just want to kind of talk through with you uh, just some ideas that we've been thinking about as far as how to move that forward um, we currently the we have 15 wells in the well field so that we can produce today uh, what our max allocation will be uh, in the well field when that's 12,000 acre feet a year and so what uh, is just kind of a, an idea to be thinking about as we move forward and once we once we begin to do the engineering on this to maybe take a look at is the the max allocation is probably the appropriate uh, build out or production uh, but we don't want to have we're going to need additional wells as far as backup and to be able to have um, if we actually had to produce that much, we certainly don't want to, want to have to have every well produce them without any backup. So what we'd probably do when that's bid is is we would need a minimum of three. Uh, so we could bid that with some alternates, kind of like we did the current project. And based on how that uh, comes in, I think you know we can make a decision at that time actually how many wells uh, we would actually uh, produce. The groundwater treatment facility currently will produce eight MGD or treat eight MGD. Its max uh, treatment is 12. It, it's going to be a difficult process to uh, get the equipment uh, into that building. It was actually designed so that uh, 
the roof could part of the roof could be removed I would anticipate that we would only want to do that one more time and so I would think that we would want to put all of the equipment in there but we want, might want to be strategic in how we uh, bring that online the radium removal equipment has to be operated once you have the media in there that removes the radium there's a minimum flow so that's why we have a minimum flow of a million and a half uh, one and a half MGD today uh, that would probably uh, could come close to doubling if we had all of the, the equipment in there. So I think we'll probably want to uh, look at some options where we can put that equipment in, have it all hooked up, tested, but not necessarily have the media in there. Uh, and that it would give us a little bit of, we'd have a little bit of lead time if we needed to, if we saw we were going to need it to then go ahead and load it up. It's also expensive um, that we have to, the, the disposal and maintaining of that uh, media, uh, we have a contract with WRT to do that, and we, we have a base fee, and then we also have a volumetric fee for that. So if we don't need to be paying that, uh, then there's no reason for us to, to have that uh, in there. So I just think just wanted to throw those things out to you that there's several options I think that we can look at as we move into uh, the design on this is how we might be strategic in having it in place, having it uh, a short fuse if we needed it uh, uh, to be able to have it online, but not have that additional cost of operation uh, or just having to use more water uh, than if we if we don't need it. So we want to take a look at that as I think we move through. Uh, projected cost for three additional wells and the uh, groundwater treatment facility upgrade would be about 30 million rather than the uh, 40 million that was uh, discussed. But uh, that could fluctuate a little bit as far as uh, depending on how many wells. Uh, we estimated at the uh, the cost of the wells. And this was the engineer's estimate from the and that came from the current engineering firm that's that's uh, that we used Corolo engineers. Uh, the, for this, the, develop the hickory. The actual cost of, uh, and, and the, I need to point out that this is not just going out and drilling a hole. This is the whole uh, cost to not only construct those wells, all of the stuff that goes with those wells, including the communication towers, and the piping to get those wells tied in. And, and they're over a mile apart. So there's quite a bit of infrastructure that goes with this. So um, the actual cost uh, was a little over three million. The uh, well driller was considerably low and and lost uh, quite a bit of money on this project. So uh, the estimate is based on what uh, th the next bid was. So it's probably and which is around three point nine million. So the four to four point two million uh, for all of that is a good budgetary number. So we feel that that's that's really what we ought to be looking at. Bottom line is this, it's an estimated cost uh, based on known conditions. Uh, ho hopefully it would come in lower. So it's, it's not, we're not spending this, it's just what we're estimating it would cost to do this piece of the project. Well, basically, I mean, we have the engineering and design already done. So, I mean, for the most part, it's not gonna be reinventing the wheel, it's just gonna be punching some more holes and plumbing it in, layman's term? Uh, there was probably more engineering associated with the well field, uh, Chuck, than, than the groundwater treatment facility because uh, of getting from point A to point B from the wells to the, you know, but but you're right. Most of it, it should be very similar to what's been done. For, right. right. So sure. there should not be a lot of cost associated with, with uh, the engineering. How many bids will we get, Bill? On the drilling, actual drilling of the wells and, and laying of the pipe, what does the city require? At least three, or I mean, I just don't know. Well, I don't, I don't, um, I don't know that we could say that today. There were three well drillers bid uh, in the last last one, so um, you know, if only two bid, then then I guess you'd make the decision whether you need to redo it or if that's a, a appropriate. So, I think we discussed. We're talking about at least three wells and potentially putting some ad alternates for a couple more to see if we could drop the price on that. Yeah, I think, I think we'd want to do that, depending on how, what the price comes in, we might decide to do the more of them. Right? So it certainly won't ha hurt to have additional ones. What is that balance though with additional kind of monthly cost of having three to five wells that are 
you know, backup wells, essentially, if we're already at maximum capacity today, I, you know, I agree that we need additional capacity. But how do we balance that? Because my understanding and my recollection is that's not real cheap for those things to just be sitting there. It's um, not. There is there is certainly a, an operational cost and, and just uh, the minimum cost that we pay for power just to have them sitting there. Uh, and I think that's something else that once we have uh, uh, all of the information, we can make that decision is maybe maybe we do three. Uh, and but then we're ready to do the other two if we see that we you know need to do that. I think we have some options to take a look at that mm -hmm. because that is it's just like the groundwater treatment facility. Yeah, uh, we want to be strategic, I think, in how we put them in place so we're not just paying money that we don't need to be spending. So in other words, what you talked about earlier of going ahead and, and outfitting it but not actually turning it on so that you're having to operate it when you really kind of don't need to, but correct, you can ramp it up pretty in pretty short order. Correct. Should that need arise? Right. Yeah, and if we break it out when you get the bid on, if, on three wells, and we look at that incremental cost on number four and five versus the just the standard O and A on month uh, cost on a on a maintained oh. basis, we can make that recommendation. And I would think too, if you had the additional wells, that you would want to operate them a little bit. You wouldn't want them just want to keep them sitting yeah, there. I keep mean, maybe you do a little rotational. Yeah, they would go in the rotation yeah. for sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think the the whole thing is we need to be. We need to put ourselves in a position where we can be as strategic as possible. It's not like we're going to wake up one day and the lake's gone. We're going to know that, that that's taking place. So we want to be in a position where we can can start taking, we're close enough that we can take whatever action we need to be to have everything in place when we need it. But it's at the same time not spending money we don't need yeah. to spend. When you'll put those triggers in there, I mean, when the when our water supply gets down to so many days, I mean, it all ties in and we know how well, what our lead time would be and how we need to merge all that, I would think, and make it work. First thing would be for Jonathan to make it rain at the right time. He's doing a fair job, but not great. <laughs> he said Sunday, we need to push him a little bit. <laughs> okay. So, so would there be any benefit in uh, having these wells engineered and designed and maybe holding up drilling until uh, a certain time or uh, does that engineering expire after a certain time? How, how, how would, can you see any benefit to that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, I think we can certainly um, would be part of the discussion with the engineers is how do we do that? You know, how can we, you know, is there an option to, to have everything ready to go? Uh, and how far out would that be good? That engineering uh, should always be good. Um, the question is, I think we'd want to ask ourselves is, do we think that pushing it out will cost us uh, more than having them in place? It's in there. So. Okay. One other quick question, and it may have been presented here at some point in time. Is there a, an analysis of what it costs for us to deliver a thousand gallons of water to a consumer if we're using it out of the hickory field or if we're using surface water? So we, we do have those costs judged for uh, our current costs. And uh, <clears throat> I don't have these in front of me. I'll try to remember them off the top of my head. But if we were using the hickory at about its current max, the, the treatment, it's about 81 cents a thousand versus of, of 20 something cents for, to use our current surface water. So that's one reason why, I mean, it's considerably more expensive to use the, uh, the hickory than it is our current surface water options. Well, that's pumping and treatment. Ish, 80, 81 cents. That's, that's right, yeah. It seemed like it was around 60 cents to treat it, maybe, is that right, for per thousand? Maybe I'm... I, I don't have... Those might have been... Pro those might have been projected costs, but now that we actually have true electri electrical costs, WRT costs, just running the facility, it's it's around 80 cents. And, and obviously with, um, with running it just at the minimum amount, the the per thousand gallon cost is considerably higher than that. Uh, we do obviously see some reduction in the unit cost if we're running it or more of it. Well, that, to me, that leaves us in the point of where Hickory's been using is a redundant system to a certain degree. Excuse me, the Hickory still is somewhat of a redundant system based on our lack of surface water. 
course, the surface water is perishable. It's evaporating as we're watching the daily reports, you know, at Ivy. So it still is prudent for us to deliver as much surface water as is as feasible before we tap into the hickory. So all we're basically looking at here is adding to the capacity of that redundant system. Mm -hmm. That's correct, Judge. The, the council recently reiterated the, the, their uh, position on that. That is, is in fact exactly what you said. Is a it's a it's a for a backup. I mean, it was not intended to be the the city's supply. Um, so the first first order of supply is surface water. However, I certainly want to be have the capacity there if needed. And so that brings us into the discussion of uh, surface water and, and what, uh, what we might need to do as a next step there. <clears throat> so we've talked about improvements to the water treatment facility, and we've talked about improvements needed in the, in the, in the um, wastewater treatment plant. One of the things that, that uh, we need to understand is that when the direct potable reuse project included the improvements to both of those facilities that was included in that estimated cost. While that is, I think everybody agrees, might be something, uh, a, a good plan for the city in the future, it's, it's not right now. So what do we do today to help shore up our surface water supplies and how do we do the improvements that to those two facilities that was uh, and still is in fact needed? So. Part of what uh, we might need to do is look at, we, we still send eight to nine million gallons a day to that wastewater treatment facility. So is there a method that we could uh, utilize that water uh, outside of direct potable reuse to augment our backup, our surface water supplies? And so there's a couple of ways that we might could do that. And um, currently the plant does not treat uh, water uh, to a sufficient quality to put it into the river. Uh, the plant does is in need, uh, serious need of some uh, in improvements. It's it's an old plant, um, and it probably has a greater need for improvements than our water treatment plant does right now. So, uh, it, if we're going to make those improvements, then we probably ought to look at uh, being able to put that water into the river, uh, getting a discharge permit. And then once it's in the river, there's a couple of options there. One would be it goes all the way down to, to Ivy. Uh, that really needs to be looked at uh, because how much of it will actually get there. Uh, is it usable? Is there some way to, for that to be uh, our water once it gets there? So there's several things there that we need, uh, we need to take a look at. Another option that uh, I had mentioned before that uh, uh, really seems to have some uh, real um, is, is a viable option, and that's is something called riverbank filtration. And basically what that amounts to is that you actually have wells uh, next to the river, and the, as, as the water goes down the river, it's getting, you, you put it in the river, it's getting that environmental treatment, um, but it might not be enough, so you pull that through with wells, you pull that water through the ground, and it basically treats it. Uh, to a, a quality that you can then send to a treatment plant uh, and utilize that water. It appears just from initial high level uh, look that the geology here is such that it would be very conducive to, to that type of project. So that's certainly um, something I think we ought to take a look at. Uh, and, and what we're going to be talking about today is maybe doing the preliminary engineering for the upgrade of the wastewater treatment plant uh, that would also then look at, at other how we might utilize uh, that water and if that riverbank filtration would be a viable option. And also what, what would be the, the uh, if we let it go all the way to Ivy, is, there, is that a possibility and is there any, addition, any water left when it gets there? Uh, the water treatment plant also needs some improvements as we've talked about, but we've been, uh, we continue to utilize that plant. It still treats water good uh, and, and we don't see any major uh, capital expenditures there uh, in, in over the next five or 10 years. It's more of just keeping the plant running. Uh, and so uh, 
outside of any catastrophic failure, we would not anticipate spending you know, a big chunk of capital on it. We did look at some uh, things that, would, that could be done that would make the plant uh, ob obviously better uh, over the next 10 years, and that would be somewhere around 22 to $25 million. Again, I would not anticipate doing that if we're going to be doing any other, unless we were saying, made the decision we're going to keep this plant and try to make, make it last as long as possible. That's probably not necessarily prudent, uh, just depending on whatever our source water is. So any improvements to that plant would be dependent and would need to take into consideration what our source water is going to be. And also, so I think we're looking at everything that we might want to do today needs to be looking to the future so that we can set ourselves up again for whatever uh, it, our source water might be, whether we do the d direct potable reuse, whether we do indirect potable reuse, or we're treating brackish water or, or, other, or other sources. So we need to look at all of that today before we um, move forward with any tr improvements to the water treatment plant. So basically the issues that we have, I think, is uh, and, and the, the hickory is, is one, obviously, and I think we're all in agreement on, on that. Uh, but we definitely need the uh, improvements to the water reclamation plant, water treatment plant. Uh, we need to be thinking about a wastewater discharge permit so that we can put the water in the river if that becomes necessary. Uh, use of wastewater effluent as a source water. Uh, any other potential water supply options that we might have associated with uh, the river or um, how we might utilize uh, other sources and how we would treat those and then the water treatment plant improvements. So what I think is a prudent way to move forward would be conducting the preliminary engineering for the wastewater treatment plant. We, we, we pretty much know what the plant process will be. We piloted, uh, in, in order to do the pilot, we had to, y'all recall, we had to develop a, a pilot treatment facility as well that would treat water to the quality that would be necessary for doing the direct potable reuse. So we know what that is. So that, then that, that process would allow us, was not only good enough for the DPR, it would also treat the wastewater to a quality sufficient to, to discharge into the river. So that's very likely the process that we would need to use since we've already piloted that, and that would take us uh, into the future. Um, so if we do the preliminary engineering on that, that allows us to develop the strategies that we would need for water supply. Uh, it, it, it will uh, determine what phases all that would be uh, constructed in uh, and the timelines associated with that that would take it all the way from the wastewater treatment plant through the, any improvements to the water treatment plant and then the costs associated with that. And then just, I don't have it here, so thinking back to that rate model, that's where that $80 million would turn in over instead of in a one-time deal. Uh, actually, it's, it's 136 because it's both, there was 56 million in, at the same time in the, in the wastewater model. So it would turn that into multiple years and we would know when we would be spending those dollars uh, and what we would need to do. So I think that from my perspective, uh, that would be prudent to move forward doing that and then also begin the uh, preparation of the discharge permit application and a bed and banks permit. Both of those take some time. N doesn't uh, mean they ever have to be used, but we don't want to get to the point where, where we think that's what we ought to be doing uh, and then start that process because the, the bed and banks permit is, takes about three years. And that, that permit's necessary that if we dump we uh, discharge into the river and we're going to pick it up downstream somewhere, we have to have a bed and banks permit to do that. Uh, and basically what that allows is, it, is it's your water. Uh, right now if we just discharge it into the river, then it becomes basically waters of the state. Um, but if we have a bed and banks permit, then the state recognizes that we're doing that and allows us to take that up downstream. The other thing I'd like to mention here is that uh, it Currently, as you know, we send our water to the uh, lagoons and then we pump it to the uh, irrigation canal. There's nothing that, that we're talking about here that would stop us from doing that. Uh, if we have water in the lakes uh, and, and we didn't need this water, it can still go to the lagoons and still go to the irrigation district. And again, I think there would be um, a concern was that 
there would be some lead time that the farmers would know that they're going to have that water or not have that water. And I, I think we would be able to accommodate that once everybody knows what the plan is. And it, if we see that we're having issues with the surface water and that we need that, that then we would go, we would continue, we would switch and, and put it into the river. The other thing that I think it gives us some flexibility to look at that y'all have talked about a lot is having water to sell, uh, that that would uh, help to uh, enhance that uh, ability to do that. So what I would like to do is, uh, is have your recommendation that we uh, proceed with uh, doing the preliminary engineering. Uh, we'd have to obviously bring somebody on board to do that. We'll uh, finish up the scope for that. Uh, hire a firm to, to do the preliminary engineering and the, uh, base, develop our strategies and timelines and costs for whatever we need to do here. Can I ask a, a question real quick before we get to that? Is could you elaborate just a little on that discharge in bed and banks? Not so much the permit, but the, how that works. I mean, you've you've talked about discharging, so we get water up to a quality that's allowed to go into the river, which, by the way, pretty much everywhere in the state does that. That has a waterway running through it. This is not new. Um, it's accounted for in, in, in so much as what goes in. But then can you kind of explain a little bit more the back end of, you, you talk about a well, the city's got land that's adequately situated for this, distance that it needs to travel, and then how it gets back into the system uh, to, to treat and distribute. Just an over, just overview, I mean, sure. I, I, just so um, that's clear. The, um, Again, the bed and banks permit allows us to, uh, and we have to account for that water, obviously, as to what we're putting in. And, and there's a lot of, uh, you have to understand what the evaporation is, and so the, you're going to have some losses. Uh, it would be minimal in, in that eight-mile stretch. The city owns another piece of property from uh, about eight miles downriver from where the um, discharge would be where the current uh, wastewater treatment plant is. Um, and so it would be anticipated that, and, and there's a low water dam there, so the conditions, everything is there uh, to make that a, a, a real possibility. Okay, once we take that water out, uh, take it back out of, the, out of the ground, pull it through the ground, then we would either, we'd have to get it back to town. And, and the quality would be, it, it, this thing would be engineered, obviously, so that the quality when it came out of the ground would be such that it could be treated with our conventional uh, water treatment plant, or at, at minimum, uh, a membrane plant of some sort, not RO. Uh, it would receive the environmental treatment that it needs uh, in that, under that scenario. Getting it back to town would be, obviously would need to be uh, a piped. I think there's a couple of options there. Uh, either build a pipeline back or uh, the possibility of, of uh, using existing pipeline that runs right through that property. Within the Ivy um, pipeline maybe. Right. And so right uh, I think there's several options uh, to look at there, how we would do that. What I like is you got an eight mile stretch that it, that water cleans itself by settling we've got those dams i mean it's the infrastructure is already there and then if we could do something with ivy the lower cost of new pipeline it's our water i mean we recapture what we discharge and we don't have to share it with anybody that makes to me the most sense to see if that's the most viable option for us right now well and you know drilling the wells you're going to have to deal with lapan kickapoo the water district, yes. um, I mean, there could be the option of just direct withdrawal from the river too, as well. I mean, it's and we, a possibility. And it is, we've talked about that. And obviously uh, there would have to be some understanding of how much environmental cleanup takes place in that eight sure. miles. There's some concerns that that's not far enough, that you, you add that, that filtration through the ground to, to accomplish all of it. But obviously that would be, it would be much cheaper just to take it right out of the river. And you know, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a little bit of losses, of course. Um, UCRA did a study back early 2000s, and I think from the release, just an FYI, from the release of O.C. Fisher down to Paint Rock, because we were sending Paint Rock some water when they were in a bind, it was about a two and a half percent channel loss 
So you're going to have some losses, but it's not going to be. Not yeah, it's not, not bad. bad okay. Other questions? So what's before us is to approve an, an RFP on the discharge permit application in the banks and bed permit application. Anybody have any concerns about that? I think these are all uh, pieces to the puzzle, you know. Uh, with this uh, preliminary engineering, it'll, it'll just give us a better understanding of uh, more information, what we, what we need to, to make a good decision. So uh, I, think, I think it's needed. And I like addressing the water quality issue. I mean, we get used to what comes through our pipes, but I think we can do better uh, long term. So if we can take four or five different issues and try and come up with a, an overall recommendation, I think that's what we're charged with. So I'd make the motion that we uh, go ahead and uh, put out the RFP for those two projects. Second. Is there a second, Chuck? Second. Thank you. Discussion? Any public comment? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Bill. Item number E. Oh, we get the mood lights. Go Ooh. ahead. <laughs> they took them away pretty quickly. Um, so I came back, or I came to y'all uh, in May talking about a grant application that had been uh, that we had applied for with the Bureau of Reclamation, uh, the Water Smart Title 16 Water Reclamation and Reuse Program. So it is geared towards the pilot program of reuse water, so it is specific in that regards. Um, so y'all recommended that we sign the resolution to proceed with the application to finalize it. Uh, we found out this summer that we were granted the application in the full amount of $300,000. Um, so now, now that we've been awarded this grant, um, I'm asking for two things from y'all today or to recommend to council. One is to accept the grant uh, in the full amount. And the additional um, item is, what are we gonna do with that $300,000? Um, the question has been raised about, do we have to match that now? And that's not the case. We've already matched it with the 1.2 that's been already dedicated and allocated to the project. So this 300,000, as I discussed with y'all before, would be to cover additional items that TCEQ, um, as going through this process, they required a lot of things that were outside the original scope of the pilot project. And so that this could help get some of those items done and further us along in the process. Uh, we've all talked to that reuse is probably in the future for San Angelo and West Texas. So by doing these additional items with the money we've been granted, we're just getting that much further along. Um, so four things that we uh, would be doing for the additional 300,000. Um, one is a corrosion study. Um, TCEQ is very concerned with how reuse water, uh, or all water in general, how it reacts with our current system, how it reacts with our current surface supplies, hickory water. You know, once that blend has been made, what's the corrosivity of it? Um, and so just taking a look at how all that would play out if we were to use direct potable reuse. Um, the next study is a radionuclide study that they were um, it's kind of unique to San Angelo in regards to the hickory water um, having levels of radium in it. Um, if we, we, it does go through the WRT treatment process that we discussed earlier, but any additional radium that may make it through that treatment process, how does that work in the direct potable reuse system? Does it get treated by the RO? You know, or is all the WRT, uh, or is WRT treating all the radium? Basically, if you had more of the um, closed loop system, just making sure you don't have a buildup of radium in any certain aspect, in which our engineers are confident that, um, you know, as was projected with the direct potable reuse, we would have an RO treatment process, which was the secondary treatment option for when we did the groundwater treatment plant. So we do know that RO treats radium out of water. Um, third thing would be public information documents, uh, sp specific to our project, 
um, and that we could use now and in the future regarding, you know, awareness to our um, water users of, you know, this has been tested, this is what, you know, just to get it on their level, we can talk science all we want, but to provide them with the information that allows them to understand and be more acceptive, acceptable of this type of water. And lastly, there's a lot of reporting that has to be done as part of the grant. Of course, they don't just accept the reports that go to TCEQ. They want their own report. The Bureau of Reclamation wants their own reports as a part of the grant funds. So for those four items, we're asking to increase Allen Plumber's contract by $300,000 so going from a $1.2 million pilot project to 1.5, knowing that the city does not have to spend any more money, we just want to use those grant funds to further the project. So basically we're just, the additional requirements that are needed, the grant's going to, going to pay for it. Correct. There's still additional items that TCEQ wants, but they could be done at a later time. These are ones that could be done, one within the price of the 300000 and ones that we can do, I guess, Im more immediately. And these are restricted funds that have to go towards these ends and studies anyway. Do they have know? to go to this study in particular. So it, it cannot be used for the water master plan or any of those. It has, it's specific to this uh, pilot program. And we feel like that, I mean, as kind of regulations change, technology changes, but what we're going to be studying here will have a certain shelf life of applicability if that waste DPR, if we do that in five years or 15 years, it, it still is going to. Yes, this data would still be relevant further down the road. Everybody okay? Yeah, and I could, to me, I mean, seeing what we're talking about doing on the discharge permit and some of those things, it, a lot of what we're doing here is applicable to that if it's something that we decide to do. Uh -huh. So it's got more than just a single use, yeah. it's got a multiple use on us making a recommendation to council in the future. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay. Motion? I'll move that we uh, expand the track, uh, the contract with Allen Plummer and Associates by is it going to be done with an RFP, or how is that contract going to be modified to reflect? We would just increase the, the contract and and add it, add scope items okay. to cover these the I items I just discussed. Increase the contract by three hundred thousand and add the scope of work items to that contract to reflect uh, you know, what the mission is here and what the suggested. Is there a second? A second. second. Jonathan, discussion. Any public comment? All for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries. Okay. Thank you. Any other items to come before us today? Any future agenda items that somebody would like to place on the agenda? If there being none, let's look at setting the next meeting date. Y'all have a recommendation on the next meeting date? Uh, I don't, but uh, I'm just was trying to think whether we need to ne meet next month or if two m 60 days would be sufficient because I'm not sure unless, unless you know of something specific in 30 days, I don't think we're going to be far enough along to have anything. Get more detailed numbers on hickory and those things. Will it take us 60 days? Well, yeah, I mean, I think come up with some further information. The next step there would be to, you know, to, to develop that scope out and then uh, see whether it's an expansion of the current contract or a new one. We could set it for 60 days, and if, yeah. if the need arises, yeah. Yeah. within that need, time let's need to call a meeting, meeting. We can call a meeting let's yeah. do that let's look at 60 days out 
Well, since we've just, uh, addressed water security and sustainability and quality and infrastructure upgrades and keeping up with the road program and funding all that today, we did a pretty good day's work. <laughs> so. Take some time off. Now. Yes. Is Wednesday okay? Look at October the 19th. It is better, I think, for the judge, at least, on doing it's not better Tuesdays. better for some of us, yeah. Tuesdays are kind of tough. What does yeah. the 19th of October look like? Not good. Okay. Give me a good one. 12th or 26th? What about the 12th? Me too. It's fine. Cool with that. Right. Set it for October the twelfth at ten a.m. Okay. You may have anything else. If not, then we're adjourned. Thank you.